morning, my name is Emmanuel Casiano Diaz, and today we are going to talk about measuring Renyi entanglement entropies using lattice worm algorithm Quantum Monte Carlo. I would like to thank the collaborators in this project, Professor Chris Herman from Middlebury College and Professor Adrian Bell Maestro, my advisor at University of Vermont. So before we talk about our approach on how to calculate entanglement entropies, I would like to mention some of the other methods that have been around for a while. First of all, entanglement entropies have been calculated for many years via exact diagonalization. The problem is that this method is limited to very small systems. And in fact, if we could just, <laughs> if we could just uh, do this for larger systems, we would not even be pursuing what we are doing with this project. An alternative has been to use path integral Monte Carlo, which has allowed for the study of ground state bosons in the continuum. And as recently as 2015, even ultra cold atom experiments have uh, confirmed theoretical entanglement predictions, although for small systems also. What we want to do is perform large scale simulations or perform large scale lattice simulations at zero temperature path integral Monte Carlo simulations. To test our algorithm, we will be uh, using the bose hubbard model. So from left to right, we have um, tunable parameters U, mu, and T, which are the interaction potential between the bosons. We have a chemical potential, and we have the hopping parameter. Also, we have the particle number operator, Ni, which counts the number of particles on that side. And we have the bosonic creation and annihilation operators. I would like to add that the diagonal part of this Hamiltonian will be composed of this interaction part and the chemical potential part, whereas the kinetic term will be of diagonal. On the bottom left, we can see a schematic configuration of the bose hubbard model phases in the very strong interaction regime and the weak interaction regime. So essentially for very strong interactions, we get a mod insulator and for weak interactions, we get a superfluid. And we would like to eventually observe this phase transitions or these phases with, um, via entanglement entropies. So our algorithm will be a zero temperature version of the lattice worm algorithm developed by Prokofiev. So the basic idea is we take a state, we propagate this state in the imaginary time direction, and we end up with paths or a set of paths like the ones in the figure uh, that will be known as world lines. Each of these world line configurations will, will have some weight that will contribute to the partition function. Once we sample the partition function, we can then estimate the observables that we want. As any other Monte Carlo method, we need a set of updates that will allow us to generate every possible configuration. Uh, in this case, every possible configuration of wear lines. And this set of ergodic updates has been well known for some time for the finite temperature case. But for the zero temperature case, we have to do some modifications. The reason for this is that in the zero temperature case, the imaginary time direction is subject to open boundary conditions, whereas for finite temperature, the imaginary time direction is subject to periodic boundary conditions. So due to this change in uh, topology of the problem, we need to expand this set of ergodic moves uh, a little bit. The moves that we propose to uh, add to this set of updates are the following. We can now allow for the insertion of a worm at imaginary time zero or a worm at imaginary time beta. These two moves along with the finite temperature set of moves that has been known for uh, quite a while uh, should, compose, should make up the set of ergodic updates for zero temperature. So I will now show some preliminary benchmark results. Here, 
we have a grand canonical simulation in the very strong interaction regime. So at this, uh, in this regime, we should get uh, the mod insulator phase. So here we have two results. This step function is the number of particles per site in our Bose-Hubbard lattice. The solid line is, a, is the result obtained from like a mean field theory calculation and the squares are the path integral Monte Carlo data. The bottom line is the on-site energy. And again, solid line corresponds to the theoretical result predicted from mean field uh, and the squares are our path integral Monte Carlo results. So now we crank down this interaction strength significantly and just, just to observe the effect of this like lower interaction regime. And here we're studying the ground state energy as a function of interaction strength, is that canonical simulation? And again, our path integral Monte Carlo data uh, seems to agree in this case with the uh, exact diagonalization results. Another result we would like to illustrate is the effect of measuring at different parts of the imaginary time uh, direction. So since we have this trial wave function acting from the ends of the uh, path, we should expect some measurement bias near the ends and hopefully something closer to the exact result uh, near the middle. So this is what we see here for the case of um, the kinetic energy on top and the uh, potential energy at the bottom. Okay, so we have now shown some pre uh, promising preliminary uh, benchmarking results, but now we would actually like to use our code to calculate the quantum entanglement between spatial bipartitions A and B of our bose hubbard lattice. Here on the top right, we see the expression for the Renyi entanglement entropies, where alpha is just a real number, and rho A is the reduced density matrix of bipartition A. The problem that we have is that via path integral Monte Carlo, we cannot access the density matrix. So the solution for this is the following. It has been shown in the past, <laughs> it has been shown in the past uh, uh, decade, various times that we can actually express trace of row A squared, also known as the purity. We can, exp uh, we can express that value as the expectation value of the swap operator. Here we have a little cartoon of how this swap operator works. We have uh, two systems by partitioning into subregions A and B, and we just interchange the contents of bipartition A in this case uh, between the two systems. So this has been shown for uh, various other quantum Monte Carlo uh, flavors. At the moment, we have a very naive implementation of this swap expectation value. So here, uh, trace row A squared, remember that will be the expectation value of the swap operator. So we have an expression for it. Um, what we'll do is that we measure the flux state at the end of the path of each of these systems on the top. Uh, then we compare them as indicated by the transparent lines. And based on the flux states that we have, I mean, that'll determine which of these chronic error deltas will survive and which uh, won't. This approach seems to work reasonably well for small systems. Uh, so below we have uh, some results for uh, a ver very small system of like two particles and two sides. And uh, here on the left, we have the results. Uh, in, in the bottom left, we have the results uh, for, like, uh, from Path Integral Monte Carlo and on the right, the exact diagonalization. So, so we see that they uh, agree quite well. And last but not least, um, we would also like to study the effect of beta on the Renyi entanglement entropies. So the expectation is that this results should be uh, exact in the limit of beta goes to infinity. At the moment, we only have uh, these values of beta, but it, it seems like this is trending towards uh, the exact value. So. On our to-do list, uh, 
what we'll be, what we'll be doing now is uh, trying to optimize this code. Um, since it's working, presumably, uh, we'll be trying to optimize it in such a way that we can now simulate uh, larger systems that we can ever study with exact diagonalization. Thank you very much.